Hey guys, how you doing? Um, I'm back onto the Y-Wing and I'm going to be using um, some masking fluid in a minute to represent um, these chipping areas here. Now, the problem I've got is that um, the plastic used for the Red Gem originally, I believe, was black, as you can see here. And here, and there's also other places that the black has shone through with um, <coughs> damage to the model, like damage created on purpose with um, dental drills or uh, a blade or some sort of <coughs> uh, sanding technique or something. But the plastic underneath can definitely be seen as black. That's different to the grey chipping. Now... Because the plastic um, or resin we were dealing with on mine was white, um, it's just had a coat of grey primer. So I can cheat and spray the areas black on this, um, then mask them off, um, and then do the grey. So the first thing I need to do now is spray it with the black very just in the little areas that I can see on here that are black so there's a few areas and then um, obviously I'll have to mask again around them with for the white um, hopefully that'll be uh, clear as mud <laughs> when I do it so you see I have um, cheated as I say I've um, just sprayed on the black areas just with flat black because it was just the colour of the plastic underneath. Um, I'll apply the liquid mask, which is the Vallejo liquid mask, which I'm using. Um, I'm going to be using these fancy little rubbery pointy tipped brushes. I've gone through them on a previous video. Um, I'm just going to literally Try and dab on where I can see the scratches and try and keep them as fine as, as, I, as I can because they were applied like, as a scratch with like, a, a sharp tool or something. See, that's way too thick. The beauty of doing it on camera. <laughs> but the good thing is you can just wipe it away. Just trying to copy the um, the ref from the Chronicles book, the newer of the two Chronicles. Again, this won't be, I mean, exact to the original model. It would just capture the feel. I'm not too fussed about getting every single marking exactly right. There's a long mark along there, but I believe that's been masked on. There's a scratch down here. Rather than bore you with every step and every little mark that I'm going to put on, this is how I'm doing it. And at the end, I'll show you with it all applied. Okay, so I've pretty much gone over all the areas that are black. Um, and you can also see the grey areas at the front. This is the Halford's Grey Primer, which I've said previously is quite dark. Um, if these grey areas are too dark, once I've removed that um, mask or liquid mask, I can then mist over some of the base coat and just lighten them up ever so slightly. Um, but right now it's going to get some Archive X Reefer White acrylic. And I'm just going to build up the layers with that.
Okay, so rather than you sit here for five minutes watching me paint white, <laughs> I'll come back to you after that's base coated. Okay, so that's been base coated in reefer white. Um, didn't take long. The first coat always goes on a bit spotty, um, but then two or three coats later and it's absolutely fine. Sorry about the lighting here, it's really bad. But you can see that that's gone on nice and smooth. Um, the next stage will be removing all the mask oil, uh, liquid mask, and laying down the red. So now this is dry, we can um, start rubbing off this liquid mask. And that's showing up the, the grey primer coat underneath. I'll go around the whole model and remove that. Okay, I removed um, most of the um, liquid mask and you can just see a difference between the grey and the black. I'll, um, I'll try and, um, I mean, well that would change anyway, but there'll be grime mists and um, base coat possibly mists and that'll, that'll just change that colour but um, it just should, I mean this this reefer white is, is quite crazy I mean that that looks an, like a cream colour and then you just turn it into the light and it, it changes to a you know a white in person looking at this is white white but the way this camera's picking up it just looks you know it has like a creamy dark tone to it. It's a very difficult colour to match. It's uh, reefer white. If I turn this light off, possibly, um, that'll show again how the colour changes. But yeah, um, next up will be the red stripe. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to go with with that. Whether it's SP Daylight Red or um, Guy gave me a early test of an enamel which was um, for the snow speeder I think um, I don't know if that was a later colour being Empire Strokes back or not I don't know if that was used but it has got an orange um, tone to it I think, it's S I think it's SP Scarlet I don't know I'll have a look um, but yeah so we're, we're getting there okay so I went with um, SP Daylight Red it does seem to have like a um, orangey tone to it. Um, that's acrylic. It's uh, just that guy sent me these test bowls uh, previously. Um, this is all thin with um, Archive X zone thinner. Um, I'll get this on here. This is always a daunting part of the any Y wing build. I hate masking out this uh, stripe. But uh, we'll see how we go. Um, yeah, so I'll just lay on that red now. I might have to stop filming actually. Never try and cover it in just one coat. Um, these acrylics work far better, built up in layers, and then just shot with a hairdryer, and then you can add it on. Like that. So you're literally watching paint dry. That's how exciting this video is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that should do for now. Um, this side does, hang on, turn the compressor off. This side 
does seem to have a more orangey appeal. Um, orange peel. <laughs> orange kind of look to it. Um, I'll move the camera over so you can see. Yeah, so up here, that looks like it's got an orange sort of overspray on it. And the same around here, possibly. Or that could just be uh, light sanding. Um, or it could be just mist. It could be anything. But I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use a bit of yellow in the mix with this SB Daylight Red. And just shoot a little bit over that corner. And possibly on that little bit as well. And maybe even the nose. I don't know. Could spoil it, but that's half the fun of trying to paint Star Wars models. Right, I've just popped in some reefer yellow into the mix. And who says you can't do this? Tiny little bit there. Tiny little bit down here. And like a flash across the nose there. We'll see how that looks in a minute. Right, so that's what we have. You can see a slight difference with the orange at the top. Very subtle. Um, what I did do, which was a mistake, is put the red on before the canopy yellowy brown, but I can live with that. I'll just do some nifty masking. <laughs> but yeah, happy with that. That's um, SP Daylight Red with a smidge of Aretha Yellow. This acrylic is, is so good. It just, um, it lays down so smooth. Um, I mean, it's still kind of wet and I'm still rubbing mask all off it it's just it's superb it's um it adheres beautifully i mean i painted a whole studio scale slave one in these paints um when guys sent them out to me um test uh, for a batch that needed testing and you know if you can do a studio scale slave one with them that which is just full of chipping and, and you go for a half a pot of mask with that thing um, and the, it's just it laid down beautifully absolutely brilliant stuff um, okay so on to the canopy next and I think um, I'm going to use 1975 mud for that um, this is the enamel but I haven't got the acrylic near me I've got it there I'll use it um, it might have been depot buff to be honest I don't know I'll have a little um, spray on some test um, pieces and see what I think looks right. I did go with um, the enamel 1975 mud in the end because I couldn't find the acrylic. But that's fine because you can shoot guys enamels perfectly well over the acrylics with no ill effects. Um, not the other way around though. You can't put the acrylics over... The um, enamels, because the acrylics dry faster than the enamel and it'll pull um, and you'll get the wrinkle, to like crinkly effect. I'm just going to dry this liquid mask with the hairdryer just to dry that last bit up. Okay, the coverage on this is really um, patchy. There's no real sort of definitive layer of, of, of this brownie sort of yellowy on it but I'll do it in a sort of a sporadic placement. Always test on the masking tape next to the bare bit of plastic so you, you know you, your spraying is okay.
the front of it is really patchy. Okay, just give that a quick blast with the hair dryer. really messed up this bit at the front here where that red's coming through. I'll never cover that with this um, mud so I'm gonna have to sort of go in with a paintbrush by hand I think to cover that up and hide the crime. I don't know, might better get rid of it. Okay, let's see what this looks like with the tape pulled off. Okay, so that's how it's looking at the moment. That's pretty harsh in this light, but um, yeah, uh, well, that'll work with some further weathering and some misting over the top of that. That should, uh, that should be fine. It really does look harsh in this lighting. It's, um, I don't know if I'm holding it against the light roll or not, but uh, anyway, yeah, that's how it stands at the moment. Next up, I'll do the um, gray panel at the front and then there's some rectangles some black rectangles at the back um, one up here and then there's some decals some marking at the front there um, yeah tons to do but this it, this looks harsh and high contrasty now but um, with the further weathering and the misting and everything that'll get knocked back and um, yeah some decent pictures taken of it and not in this sort of harsh lighting out look passable 